Yo guys, it's ya, boy oh, Jeremy Chappell here, and welcome back finally to my YouTube channel. And uh, I know it's been like five months since I uploaded an actual video. In this vi if I look tired in this video, I'm sorry. I've recorded six to eight videos just today, August the third the day it's thundering and lightning and raining and like hell out. If the lights flicker, that's why. Or if the lights go out during this, that's why. Anyways, the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup, 1967. And the last time they won the Cup, they had Frank Mahovlich, Eddie Shack, Red Kelly, Tim Horton, Terry Sarchuk, and Johnny Bauer, just to name a few of their star players anyways. They finished third in the league with 77 points. Their GM and coach at the time was Punch Imlach. In the semifinals, they beat the Boston Bruins four games to two. And mind you, Boston had Bobby Orr at that point. And in the finals, they beat the Montreal Canadiens four games to two. And mind you, again, they had Jonathan, they had Jean Beliveau, Dick Duff, and Henry the Rocket Richard. Actually, I don't remember if Henry was the Rocket or the Pocket Rocket. I don't remember which brother he was. In the 2014-2015 season, or during the 2014-2015 season, actually it was either during the 2013-2014 or the 2014-2015 season, Brandon Shanahan became president, and he's still president to this day. And during that time, I want to talk to you guys about some things that has happened since Shanahan has been president of the uh, Maple Leafs. During the 2014-2015 season, or the 2014-2015 season, he replaced coach Randy Carlyle with Peter Horacek. The Maple Leafs won 30, 44, and 8 for 68 points. They drafted William Nylander and Pierre Engvall. And they signed James Reiner, Zach Hyman, and William Nylander. During the 2015-2016 season, Shanahan replaced GM Dave Norris with Lou Lamorello. The Leafs went 29, 42, and 11 for 69 points. They traded away Phil Kessel, Dion Phaneuf, and James Reiner. They drafted Mitch Marner. And then they signed Mitch Marner. Nazim Kadri, Jonathan Bernier, Morgan Riley, and Frederick Anderson. And if you guys are still watching at this point, if you're wondering why I'm looking over there, it's I'm grabbing, I'm either putting a paper over there or I'm grabbing it. And if I'm looking down, I'm reading off of it. During the 2016 2017 season, the Maple Leafs went 40, 27, and 15 for 95 points. They traded away Jonathan Bernier. They acquired probably the worst free agent they ever acquired, Justin Hall. They drafted Austin Matthews and Joseph Wall, and they end up they ended up signing Austin Matthews. In the 2017-2018 season, they went 49, 26, and 7 for 105 points. They acquired Patrick Marlowe. They drafted Timothy Lilgren. They, and then they signed Timothy Lindgren after drafting him. They signed Justin Holt, Zach Hyman, and Pierre Engvall. In the 2018-2019 season, Shanahan replaced GM Lou Lamorello with Kyle Dubis. After the season, they just had 105 points. He replaced GM Lou Lamorello with Kyle Dubis. The Maple Leafs that season won 46-28-8 for 100 points. They acquired free agents Jordan Subban, John Tavares, and Tyler Enos. They drafted Rasmus Sandin and Pontus Holmberg. And then they ended up signing Rasmus Sandin, William Nylander, Justin fucking Hall, and Austin Matthews. In, 20, in the 2019-2020 season, Shanahan replaced coach Mike Babcock with Sheldon Keefe. The Toronto Maple Leafs went 
36, 25, and 9 for uh, 81 points. They traded away Patrick Marlowe and Nazim Kadri. They signed free agent Jason Spezza. They drafted Miko Cap Miko Kokenen. If I mess up names, I'm sorry. And then they signed Kasperi Kapanen, Alexander Kerfoot, Mitch Marner, Justin fucking Hall. They signed him again. Pierre Engvall and Jake Muzzin. During the 2021-2021 season, they went 35, 14, and 7 for 77 points. Mind you, that if I'm not mistaken, that was the first year of the NHL bubble due to the crown. They traded away Miko Lettinen. They acquired free agents Wayne Simmons, TJ Brody, and Joe Thornton. And they signed Jason Spezza. In the 2021-22 season, the Maple Leafs went 54-21 and seven for 115 points. Mind you that it was their best season since Shanahan has been president. They acquired free agents Michael Bunting, David Camp, and Bobby McMahon. They lost Frederick Anderson, Nick Foligno, Zach Hyman, and Joel Thornton. They drafted Matthew Knives, and they signed Joseph Wall Morgan Riley, Mark Giordano, and Timothy Lilgren. And then in the 2022-23 season, which was just the last season, they won 50, 21, and 11 for 111 points. They traded away Peter Marazic, uh, Rasmus Sandin, and Pierre Engvall. They acquired free agents Ilya Samsonov, Victor Meat. Kale Young Cook and Zach Aston Reese. They lost Jack Campbell and they signed Pierre Engvall again. Now, Sheldon Keefe is still the coach, mind you. During the 2019 2020 season, that was the season he replaced Mike Babcock. The Leafs had 59 points. Oh, sorry, the Leafs had however many points they had, but with him, they got 59 points. 2021-20, sorry, 2020-21, they got 77 points. 21-22, they had 115. 2022-23, they had 111. During the 2018-2019 season, they had GM Kyle Dubas, who just... During the offseason, signed with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And during the 2018-2019 season, I'm actually, I'm not going to break down the points because I said them already. Now, Michael Bunting, who was with Toronto for two years, signed a three-year $13.5 million contract with the Carolina Hurricanes. The two years he was with Toronto during the 2021-2022 season, he had 63 regular season points and three playoff points. And during the 2022-2023 season, he had 49 regular season points and two playoff points. Justin Hall signed a three-year $10.4 million contract with the Detroit Red Wings. Good riddance, but I still have to go through the stats with him. I still have to go through his stats with you guys. So, 2017-2018, he had two regular season points, and he didn't play in the playoffs. Or if he did, actually, no, he didn't play in the playoffs, sorry. 2018-2019, one regular season point, didn't play in the playoffs. 2019-2020, 18 regular season points, zero playoff points. 2020-21, he had 20 regular season, one playoff point. 2021-22, he had 23 regular season points, one playoff point. 2022-23, just last season, he had 18 regular season points, one playoff point. Alexander Kerfer, who just signed a two-year, $7 million contract with the Arizona Coyotes, he was with Toronto for four years. Which during his time in with the Toronto, 2019 2020, he had 28 regular season points, three playoff points. 
2020-21, he had 23 regular season points, 6 playoff points. 21-22, he had 58 regular season points, 20, sorry, 2 playoff points. And 22-23, he had 32 regular season points, 2 playoff points. Noel Asa Achari signed a 3-year, $6 million contract with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He had one year with the Toronto Maple Leafs, which was just last year, or last season. Which, during that season, he had five regular season points, two playoff points. Luke Shen, who signed a three-year, $8.25 million contract with the Nashville Predators. He played one season in Toronto, which was last season. Which, he had during that season, he had one regular season point and one playoff point. Ryan O'Reilly signed a four-year, $18 million contract with the National Predators. He played one year with Toronto, which was last season. Which, he, during that, he had 11 regular season points and 9 playoff points. And Eric Gustafsson signed a one-year, $825,000 contract with the New York Rangers. He played one season with the Toronto Maple Leafs, which was last season, where he had four regular season points and one playoff point. Now, during the offseason, the Toronto Maple Leafs signed John Klingberg to a one-year $4.15 million contract, Ryan Reese to a three-year $4.05 million contract, Tyler Bertuzzi to a one-year $5.5 million contract, Max Domi to a one-year $3 million contract, and Dylan Gambrell to a one-year $775K contract. That was for all the minors, sorry, that was for all the Toronto Maple Leafs and for the minor leagues, for the minor league, they signed William Lagerson and Maxime LeJoy both to one-year contracts. They re-signed David Camp to a four-year, $9.6 million contract, but the two seasons so far that he's played for Toronto, 2021-22, he had 26 regular season points, two playoff points. And during the 2022-2023 season, 27 regular season points, 3 playoff points. And they re-signed Pontus Holmberg to a 2-year, $1.6 million contract. And last season, the one year he's been with Toronto so far, last season he had 13 regular season points and he didn't play in the playoffs. Now, let's talk about the core four. Also known as Matthews, Tavares, Minor, and Nylander. Austin Matthews is getting eleven point six four million dollar con uh, million dollars next season. He's been with Toronto seven years, and mind you, he gets good regular season points. 2016, 2017, he had sixty nine regular season points. 2017, 2018. 63, 2018, 2019, 73, 2019, 2020, 80, 2020, 21, 66, 2021, 20, 2022, 106, 2022, 2023, 85. And it's the same with all the other core four. John Tavares, five years, 2018, 2019, 88 regular season points. 2019, 2020, 60 regular season points. 2020, 2021, 50 regular season points. 2021, 2022, 78 regular season points. 2022, 2023, 80 regular season points. Mitch Miner, seven years he's been with the Leafs. 2016, 2017, 61 regular season points. 2017, 2018, 69 regular season points. 2018, 2019, 94 regular season points. 2019, 2020, 67 regular season points. 2020, 2021, 67 regular season points, 2021, 2022, 97 regular season points, and 2022, 2023, 99 regular season points. And Nylander, who's been with Toronto for eight years, 2015, 2016 was his worst year with the least. He only had 13 regular season points, mind you. 2016, 2017, 61 points during the regular season. 2017, 2018, 61 regular season points. 2018, 2019, 27 regular season points. 2019, 2020, 59 regular season points. 2020, 2021, 42 regular season points. 21, 2021, 2022, 80 regular season points. And 2022, 2023, 87 regular season points. Like I said, they do good during the regular season. 
But as soon as it comes to playoffs, they can't get points during the playoffs. Austin Matthews, like I said, is getting $11.64 million next season. Over the seven years, he hasn't been able, except for last season, because Toronto finally made it to the second round. He hasn't been able to get over 10 regular season points. He, between 2016 and 2023, it goes like this. Five, two, six, six, five, nine, and 11. Each of those is a different season, by the way. He, they can't get playoff points. Sean Tavares, who's getting $22 million over the next two years. Altogether, he's getting $22 million for the next two years. The five years he's been with Toronto. Five, three, zero, six, eight. Playoff points. That's that for them. Mitch Marner, who's getting $21.8 million altogether for the next two seasons. Playoff points. Four, nine, four, 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 eight, and 14. That was last year when Toronto, last season when Toronto finally made it out of the playoffs. And Nylander, if he stays with Toronto, will be getting $6.96 million next season. The eight years he's been with Toronto, no, he didn't play in the playoffs during his first year with Toronto in 2015-2016. But when he's finally played in the playoffs, 4, 4, 3, 4, 8, 7, 10. And that, that 10 points was last season when Toronto finally made it out of the second round. Now let, let's look at the other forwards. Kale Yarncook, he's getting $6.3 million altogether for the next three seasons. He's been with Toronto one year, last season, which was last season where he had 39 regular season points and three playoff points. Matthew Nyes is getting $1.85 million altogether for the next two seasons. The one year he's been with Toronto last season, he had one regular season four points and four playoff points. And mind you, he only played three games. Nicholas Robertson is getting 800K next season. He's on the injured reserve list. He's been with Toronto four years, but he's been doing so terribly. The four years he's been with Toronto, he keeps switching between the major league and the minor league. So I'm not even going to go through his stats with you guys because he keeps switching between the NHL and the AHL so much. And Sam Lafferty, who's getting $1.15 million next season, has been with Toronto one year. And last season he had six regular season points and three playoff points. Now, let's look at defensemen. Morgan Riley has four, is getting $45 million altogether for the next six seasons. He's been with Toronto 10 years. And mind you, like the other, like the core four, he does okay during the regular season. Since 2013, 2014, 27, 29, 36, 27, 52, 72, 27, 35, 68, and 41. That's all the regular seasons. But then again, you get to the playoffs. 2013, 2014, 2014, 2015, 2015, 2016, he didn't play in the playoffs. But when he finally started playing in the, tw in the 2016, 2017 playoffs, 5, 5, 5, 1, 3, 6, and 12. That 12 was last season when Toronto finally made it out of the second round, first round. TJ Brody is getting $5 million next season. He's been with Toronto three years. 14, 28, and 14. That's the three regular seasons. But it's the same with the playoffs. All three seasons, he only had two playoff points. Even last season, mind you. 
once Toronto made it to the second round. Jake Muzzin is getting $5.6 million next season, and he might not even play because he's on the long-term injured reserve list. During the 2022-23 season, he only played four games. He hasn't played since the 2022-2023 season, where he only played four games. He's been with Toronto five years, 16, 23, 27, 14, and one regular season. That was one regular season point. That was last season when he only played four games. During the playoffs, 2, 0, 3, 3, and then no playoffs last year because he didn't play. Mike Giordano, who's getting 800K next season. He's been with Toronto two years, 12 and 24. That's how many regular season points he got in the past two seasons. And both seasons in the playoffs, he only had two playoff points. Timothy Lilgren is getting 1.4 million next season. And just like whoever it was that kept switching between the NHL and the AHL, it's the same with Timothy Lilgren. He switches so much it's not worth going through his stats. Jacob McCabe is getting $4 million next season. And last season, he only played 21 games because he was injured. He had five regular season points and two playoff points. Connor Timmins is getting $2.2 million for the next two seasons. He's been with Toronto one, year, one season where he played 25 games with them. And last season, he won 14 regular season points and no playoff points. And, and well, I should say he didn't play in the playoffs because mind you, he was injured. And Nicholas Robertson, 800K next season. He's been with Toronto four years and mind you, he keeps switching between the NHL and the AHL. So not worth going through it. Joseph Wall is getting 1.53 million for the next two seasons. He's been with Toronto for two years. During the 2021-2022 season, he went four, three, and one during the regular season. He didn't play in the playoffs. He had a 2.75 goals against and a 0.911 save percentage. During the 2022-2023 season, he went seven, six, and one in the regular season and he went one and two in the playoffs. He had a 2.16 goals against in the regular season and a 2.45 in the playoffs. He had, not, he had a 0.924 save percentage in the regular season and 0.915 in the playoffs. Ilya Samsonov, who's been with Toronto one year, or one season, and he's get. I forget how much he just got for next season, but he's back again next season. Last season with Toronto, he went 27, 10, and 5 during the regular season, and 4 and 4 in the playoffs. He had a 2.33 goals against in the regular season, and a 3.13 during the playoffs. He had a 0.919 save percentage in the regular season and 0.898 during the playoffs. And Matt Murray, who's getting close to $4.7 million next season, who won't probably won't be playing because he's on the long-term injury reserve list. He, he's been with Toronto one year. And last season, he went 14-8-2 in the regular season and he didn't play in the playoffs because he's injured. He had a 3.01 goals against and a 0.903 save percentage. Now, I hate to say it, but something has to be done. If I was Toronto, I would either buy out or trade away Nicholas Robertson, Jake Muzzin, Matt Murray, and Joseph Wall. Those four have to either be traded away or bought out. 
if they're looking for other players to sign, their center left winger Trevor Zegers, sign him to a one year, one million dollar contract. There's left winger, right winger Alexis Lafreniere, sign him to a one year, four million dollar contract. There's right winger, left winger Jesse Yelonen, sign him to a one year, one million dollar contract. Left winger Igor Sokolov, sign him to a one year, 800k contract. Or their center left winger, right winger, Rasmus Kap Kapari. Sign him to a one year 900k. If you're looking for left defensemen to replace Jake Muzzin if you get rid of him. There's Logan Stanley. Sign him to one year 900k. Tim Burney, one year 950k. And Kevin Ball, one year 800k. If you get rid of Matt Murray and Joseph Wall or just one of them and you want to replace them. There's, go there's goalie... Uh, there's two goalies up for grabs. Philip Gustafsson, one year, one million dollars. Jonathan Bernier, one year, four million dollars. If they sign, if those players sign for that. It's just, I'm sick and tired. I hate being a Leafs fan. The only reason I stay on being a Leafs fan, one, because I... I like the Leafs even though they lose all the time. But the second reason is my mom, who passed away in 2012, was a Leafs fan. She never got to see the Leafs win another cup. I wanna, I wanna do that for her. If the Toronto Maple Leafs win a Stanley Cup, I wanna be there for that. But with the way they're playing right now, it's not gonna be done. They need to do something. Because like I said. During the regular season. It's all good. Matthews. Mar the core four. Can get the regular season points. But it's the fucking playoffs man. None of the core four. I don't think. Any of the players. Have gotten over 10. Regular. Uh, playoff points. Since they've been with the team. Mind you. If they got over 10. It was only. Last season. When they made it out of the first round. But at this point, I don't know what to do with, about the least guys. Because it's just to the point where I'm done with them. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. And as my two sayings always go, always shoot your shot before it's too late. And always tell your loved ones. You love them before it's too late. Peace out and I will see you guys in the next one.